Welcome to the candidates debate for the 10th Plymouth District State Representative posi position. Uh, tonight we have the Democratic candidates, three of them in total, and I'm going to introduce them, each uh, running for the vacant seat created by Christine Canavan. Um, I'm going to go left to right in order of uh, appearance. So first up, we have uh, candidate for State Representative Paul Beckner. Secondly, we have um, Peg Curtis. And third, last but not least, we have Michelle Dubois. We're going in ballot order at the moment because when there are no incumbents in the race, you go alphabetically. Let me introduce to you tonight's panelists um, who are helping here today, and we'll also go from left to right. We have Larry Boyd, who is the um, creator, originator, and administrator, I guess, of the Brockton Hub. Uh, right next to uh, Larry Boyd, we have uh, Ozzy Jordan, who is a school committee member in Ward 6. He's the host of NAACP Forum, and he is the present chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. And uh, last but not least, we have Steve Foote, who is the former chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, uh, the former host of Democratically Speaking, and he will be uh, anchoring on election night with the upcoming September 9th primary that we are going to follow the state rep primary, which is in the 10th Plymouth District. And just so you know what the 10th Plymouth District is, because it gets confusing, we have three state representative districts in Brockton. Uh, the 10th Plymouth is Ward 6, all four precincts, A, B, C, and D, Ward 5, B, C, and D, and Ward 4, B, and C. It's the entire town of West Bridgewater, and it's one precinct, Precinct 1 in East Bridgewater. So we'll get right to the de debate, right to the questions. We did a drawing first uh, earlier in the evening, a totally scientific uh, drawing where we pulled out of a hat, and uh, the opening uh, statement for two minutes is uh, Peg Curtis. She Drew first. Peg. Thank you, Mark. Thank you to Brockton Community Access Ta Cable Television for inviting us um, here this evening. And thank you, Mark, for um, uh, ha hosting this this evening. I'm Peggy Curtis, and I believe I am the best candidate for the position of state representative in the 10th Plymouth District. I moved to Brockton about 17 years ago, bought a home, and raised my three children here. When they were in high school, I went back to school myself and I became a teacher. And um, I took 16 courses in one year just so I can complete on time. Um, I have been working in the community for the last 17 years on legislative issues as a community organizer and leader. And I've worked cooperatively with many diverse groups. I worked with Senator Keenan to successfully um, pass the prescription monitoring bill this bill monitors um, the prescriptions, the OxyContin prescriptions, the persons who are receiving them and the doctors who are writing them to prevent abuses and fraud. Three years ago, I was also elected to the Democratic City Committee and then elected as the Ward, Ward 6 chairperson. Through my efforts with BIC, the Brockton Interfaith Community, I've successfully helped pass the minimum wage bill and have su supported efforts to obtain funding for a new drug court in the 10th Plymouth District. A drug court is a 18 month program that is an alternative to jail for non-violent drug offenders. I am the only candidate that has been working diligently to highlight the drug epidemic and help our communities reduce crime and save lives. As your next state representative, I will work hard to keep you safe, keep health care affordable, reduce our taxes, care for our veterans, and finally I plan to meet monthly with all of my constituents. I ask you to vote for me on September 9th. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is Paul Beckner. Good evening. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, having this forum tonight, Mike and the panel and uh, uh, the camera, camera people. And uh, it's quite an honor to be seeking your vote as your next, next state representative uh, in uh, the 10th District in uh, Plymouth County. Uh, I grew up in Brockton. I was born in Quincy. 
and I spent the first three years of my life in West Bridgewater. And then my father bought a house over in uh, Brookfield Drive and uh, went to Brockton Schools, Massasoit Community College, Suffolk University. I've uh, been in business ever since college, pretty much. I had a dancing school when uh, I was uh, 19 years old with my fiance at the time. So I know a little bit of, about budgets and, uh, and how to uh, cut costs and to be efficient uh, in doing so. And uh, to get to the chase, the average American is getting pounded today. Uh, it's, I see it every day. It's just amazing that, it, that it's, it's gone on this long. It's been a real, real heartbreaking uh, adventure seeing people who have lost their homes left and right, people who have gone bankrupt, not once but twice in, in some cases. They're losing their automobiles. And these are people who are gainfully employed and have worked very hard, 25, 30 years, and they don't know how it happened. How did this happen? Um, I think it's very irresponsible uh, to have been raising property taxes in the city of Brockton over the last uh, 10 years or so. Um, I've been fighting for the last three years to stave off tax increases. We've had moderate success. I belong to a group called Brocktonians for Limited Taxation. And, uh, it's just been very heartbreaking. So let me uh, finish my opening statement with, we need to act, not just talk. We need to be inventive, not restrictive. We need to be courageous, not hesitant. We need to be thoughtful and compassionate. That's what I envision for Brockton. That's what I envision for West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, and all of Massachusetts. And I want your vote come election day on Tuesday, September 9th. Please vote. Okay, and uh, Michelle Dubois. Thank you, Mark. And thank you all for being here this evening. I really am thankful for this opportunity to be here tonight to talk to the voters directly via cable access about my plans for the 10th Plymouth District and for Brockton. My, um, the ward I represent in Ward 6 is all of uh, the 10th Plymouth District. So if you didn't know or you're watching cable, so you probably watch cable often, I am on cable and I have been for the last nine years as the Ward 6 City Councilor. During that time, I have um, really gained the experience necessary. I've drafted legislation. I wrote the medical marijuana um, zoning ordinance that places any facility that's to come to Brockton away from children, away from schools, away from res residential property. I'm uh, the person that wrote and got um, the city ordinances to be online for open government. I got into politics because a big business wanted to bring a garbage transfer station to a residential neighborhood. And I championed that grassroots effort. And in the end, we wound up getting the very first denial of a garbage transfer station that's been ever issued in the state. And we also got legislation drafted that was attached to a budget that made it illegal to place that trash transfer station in the location they wanted to put it in. And in that fight, I realized you can make a lot of good from the inside. So I ran for city council, and I've been reelected five times. So I've been a city councilor for nine years. And my goal has been, first and foremost, public health and safety. I grew up in Brockton. I was born and raised here. I went to Brockton Public Schools. I went <coughs> off, graduated from college, and now for the last 18 years, I've been a community developer working in nonprofit management and development in addition to um, my job as a city councilor. So I ask because I am the most qualified for this position and the most ready to lead on day one. I ask for your vote and I ask for your support on September, September 9th. Thank you very much. Perfect. Everybody kept the time. Thank you very much. Um, what I did by introducing everybody else is I did not introduce myself. My name is Mark Lindy and I'm the general manager here and uh, election coverage is one of my favorite things to do. So we're gonna get right into the questions and we're gonna go uh, left to right. Um, I'm gonna reverse the order each time so nobody feels <coughs> like they're first or last or in the middle. Okay, I'm a middle child so I'm used to that. We're gonna start with Larry Boyd uh, from the Brockton Hub and he has a question. It, this, the question is to all three of the candidates and we will start first with uh, the question to Michelle Dubois. Okay, hi Michelle, how Hi are Larry, you? I'm great. Good. Thank you. Um, as you may know, 
I'm the creator and administrator of a growing 16,000 member social media platform called the Brockton Hub. And I designed that to be a voice for the community. So if you're elected, how do you feel about participating in such a forum to augment the idea of a growing voice where I'd imagine you'd keep your voters informed about your progress at the State House? And how do you plan on contributing to the forum, uh, allowing that growing voice to be heard? You have two, uh, everything will be a two minute answer. Wonderful. So I do know about the Brockton Hub. I think it's a wonderful resource uh, for the community and the city. Uh, if I, hopefully when I'm elected, but if I'm elected state representative, mm -hmm. I plan on being open and accountable and accessible in all different variable forms. So I'll be having an online uh, website, as most people do, um, accessible via um, the internet, email, text message, telephone, and as well as I plan on having monthly meetings at every single um, elderly facility, any type of council on aging, any type of housing. I want to go there and get the issues from the elders. I plan on having open office hours um, in all the portions of the district, being Brockton, West Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater on a monthly basis so I can get out to the voters um, who are most important and find out what's important to you as the changing dynamic goes. So I do plan on using multiple platforms to um, stay ever present in um, the lives and of my constituents. Not only because I'm interested, but because it's really what drives me. It's what's driven me as a city councilor to really answer the problems that, are, that the people are facing. And you don't get to know what the problems are if you're hidden away. So the best way to know about what's happening is to be on the street. Thank you. Uh, next, same question for Peggy Curtis. Hi, thank you, um, Larry. It was nice to meet you this evening. Um, the Brockton Hub is something new for me this year, and I love the idea. Um, there was two forums in Brockton, uh, in Brockton.com and the Brockton Hub. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to see if we can just get it to one so that we can all get the same information in one particular place. Um, I think it's wonderful. I think it's catching on, and um, if you want to find out what's going on, it's a great resource. I think we also need to keep in mind, though, those who are not on the Internet. I've met a lot of elders. Um, they weren't born in the computer age, so it seems um, really out of their grasp. So I think we need to stay in touch with newspapers and other forms of media, like some of them might be on Facebook. Um, but I think with um, Facebook, that's where I post all of my updates and then I will share it to others. I think um, the hub can be linked to Facebook so that we can all stay in touch. And um, I, I thank you for starting that. That was a, a very brave and courageous uh, thing that you did. Thank you. Okay, and the same question for Paul Beckner. Oh, I'll answer the question very directly. <laughs> I think, uh, and I've told you several times, I think it's a fantastic forum, a fantastic medium <clears throat> to get current events, to get people involved and engaged. Unfortunately, I don't see more than maybe 100 different names, you know, responding to posts, uh, particularly uh, about political issues. Uh, but I think you know that I'm very uh, active on there. And I don't shy away from, uh, from debates. Uh, I try to articulate my answers so they can't be used against me down the road, but uh, I, I love it. I think it's fantastic, and uh, I think there, there are going to be many, many uses down the road uh, in, the, and in the years to come for something like that. It's only going to grow larger. Uh, media um, is gravitating away from print media. I think it's starting to make a little uh, comeback, uh, uh, you know, the newspapers and so forth, but they're just, they're, they've lost their grasp. I think you get, people get more informed about community issues on the Brockton Hub than they do in a local newspaper or e even on television. I think it's uh, what, you, what you developed there, and I, I'm not sure you, you had it totally in mind what it was gonna become, it's become incredible. But as far as how I plan to use it um, when I become the state representative, I'm gonna establish a, a District 10 Community Advisory Committee. It's gonna be made up of residents, business owners, uh, from Brockton, East and West Bridgewater. And we're going to discuss issues and, and pending and proposed legislation. And 
I can envision making that readily available and for debate on the hub because if we got 20 or 30 members uh, on the uh, on the committee, <clears throat> the ideas that we put forth, I mean, you might as well get more people involved. I mean, I can see literally hundreds weighing in their opinions and developing polls and such. So I think it's going to be fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next question is uh, from Ozzy Jordan, and the order for this one is going to be Peggy Curtis first, Paul Beckner second, and Michelle Dubois third. Good evening, and welcome to all three of you. <clears throat> I'd be remiss as a sitting school committee person not to ask a question around the schools. So for the three of you, hopefully you're familiar with the funding, state funding, and what that means. How would you change that so that it's an equal funding level for all the cities and towns in the Commonwealth. And that would be first to Peggy. Yep, thank you. Um, it's interesting, we um, actually had a debate uh, this week with the West Bridgewater um, School Committee and um, they asked similar questions because there's a formula that's used to calculate um, each student. And, disproportionately West Bridgewater is lower um, per capita per pupil than West Bridge, uh, East Bridgewater and Brockton. So they're asking for reform of that particular formula also. Um, and it seems to me if um, you're all using the same books and equipment, then it probably should be uniform across the state how much it costs per student. Um, so that would be something that I would definitely look into as a state representative. Okay, um, next would be Paul Beckner. Well, I think it's shameful that across the state, particularly in the South Shore, uh, you have Brockton, West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, <clears throat> in our district. Brockton in particular had to give out pink sl slips to 199 teachers and janitors. And, uh, that to me is just beyond belief. It's, un, it's, un, it's unfathomable how something like that could possibly take place, particularly when in our state budget there are billions of dollars that are being wasted. Uh, that's got to be looked into. We need to get more funding down here for our schools. Uh, like Peggy touched on with West Bridgewater and East Bridgewater um, in, in relation to Brockton as well, West Bridgewater gets 20% uh, Chapter 70 funding uh, for their school system. So that, that means their funding with their, ta with their tax dollars, the local tax dollars, 80%. How that's possible in Brockton, I'm not sure what the percentage is, but it's in the 90 percentile uh, as far as funding uh, from the state. There's something amiss there. There's not, there's not a proper distribution of funds, just, just as there aren't for, for our seniors and there aren't for our veterans and uh, for public safety either. There's just something really wrong and it's got to be uncovered at the state level in order to uh, bring these, uh, you know, the school system and public safety and, and the senior funding and, and, and for the veterans up to, up to snuff. Okay, and Michelle? Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Mr. Um, Jordan, for the question. Um, I think this is a good example of where my experience as a legislator and on the city council um, helps me understand things differently than my opponents. Under both of my opponents' um, answers, they would have Brockton's uh, funding reduced if they wanted everything to just be fair and everyone get the same amount of funding for every town. Um, and that would mean it would bring even less money into the district, Mr. Jordan, and so there'd be even less money for the community. I don't see that as the solution. No, no, no. Brock, don't. Please don't inter Please don't interrupt. Does that if the, I'll give. No, no. no I, if I'll give time for a rebuttal if necessary, but please the, don't interrupt. Thank you. The problem with um, our current way that students are funded is that funding for the student doesn't come until the next school year. And so in a volatile population like Brockton where we'll have 500 new students in a year, the school department doesn't get the money to pay for those students until the following year. So my solution would be to create an emergency um, account for communities like Brockton, like other gateway cities that have volatile populations and a lot of increasing students. And if there was a problem mid-year where there were more students in the school under new enrollment, then that community would have the ability to go back to the state and ask for appropriate funding. That's, that's the technical answer. Um, but the real answer is that we need more funding 
for schools, not less funding for schools. We need more funding for schools. And the way that we can do that is by increasing the revenue that comes into um, our state. And I think that if you, if you learn this fact, if you make more than $250,000 a year, you're paying 6% of your income to taxes. Most of us don't make $250,000 a year in Brockton. If you're making less than $250,000 a year, you're paying 10% of your income to taxes. So as your state representative, I'm going to change that equation. I'm going to fight so everybody pays the same amount, and then there'll be more money coming into the district and down to Brockton for school, schools and, and teachers. Thank you. I'm assuming the other two would like a rebuttal. Minute, a minute for a rebuttal. I, I'm not sure what she was referring to. I never mentioned the word cut funding for Brockton. I think uh, just to the opposite, uh, I was referring to we need more funding in the city of Brockton. They need more funding in West Bridgewater, and I'm sure they're doing East Bridgewater as well. So, to to. to well, and, and ahead, my Peg. comments also um, West Bridgewater gets the least amount. East Bridgewater gets the middle amount, and Brockton gets the most amount of uh, Chapter 70 monies per student. So I did not say that we were going to reduce um, funds. If I might? Mm -hmm. yep. I think by um, either of my opponents saying that they were going to make it fairer so everybody gets the same amount, then someone is going to get reduced. Not everybody is going to come to 80%. That isn't, there's only so much in the pie. And Brockton gets more of a percentage because we have more students that have English as a second language. Um, they live in poverty. We have students that have ne special needs. We're a city, and cities have to be treated differently. <clears throat> I'm, from, I'm from Ward 6, and there's, it's the least crime in the city. If we apportioned out police presence fairly, that means there'd be more police officers in Ward 6, but they wouldn't be where the crime is. So everything can't always be the same for everyone. And that's why, as your state representative, I'm going to fight for your your fair share, which isn't always the same as what everybody else um, deserves. Thank you very much. Can I have just one more, if I may? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm not sure what she's listening to, but I, I think that's been a, uh, a trade of hers throughout her uh, nine years as a city councilor. So, Peg or Michelle, any no. final words? No. Okay. Let's go to the next question then. Uh, Steve Foote. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, the number one story in the local news has been about Market Basket. In the 10th Plymouth District, there's a Market Basket in Brockton, there's a Market Basket in West Bridgewater. The Market Basket in Brockton was brought here as the quote unquote savior of the Westgate Mall. Uh, now it looks like uh, this protracted fight between the two authors at Market Basket is not going to be settled. It looks like they're going to close 61 out of the 71 stores. If do you believe that a state, elected state representative has any place in getting involved in, a, in the business of a family-owned, non-union business? Does a state rep have any, any say in that? And if, uh, if not, uh, if, the, if these stores close and a couple of hundred people lose their jobs or a few hundred people lose their jobs, what plans would you have to find jobs for these people? Okay, we're going to start with Paul Beckner. Well, when it affects the entire community, as this does, um, I think Market Basket, when they opened at the Westgate Mall and in West Bridgewater, uh, were just, it was incredible for the area. Um, they, they were able to not only compete with Shaw's and Stop and Shop, but they actually betted their prices. I mean, I, I, my wife and I used to shop at the Market Basket down in uh, Rainham for years. We'd drive all the way down there because when you compare the, the items that you'd get, uh, you could walk out of uh, Shaw's with seven bags for a hundred dollars. You could walk out of Market Basket with twenty bags for a hundred dollars. So it, it, it is a very, very big issue in this area. Uh, a lot of people depend on uh, 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 a retail outlet like that for uh, for, for groceries, uh, where you get a real good deal in order to, uh, to, to 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 base their budget upon. So yes, I think uh, as a legislator, you need to be involved as an arbitrator and to uh, try to, to bring both sides together, whether it's a family or whether it's uh, uh, some other, uh, 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 whether it's a corporation fighting a corporation. I mean, it's a family squabble. But I mean, we all have families, we understand that. 
Uh, but the bigger picture is for the community. So to be an arbitrator is somebody uh, who's in, in, in between trying to find a, a common ground to work with and, and to help come to a solution for the benefit of all. I, I certainly believe the legislator has a role there. Okay, uh, next would be Michelle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foote. Um, as of two hours ago was the last time I checked the news, and um, there was still meaning about trying to find a settlement. So my hope is that they're going to be able to find a settlement, because I love shopping at Market Basket. Um, what I really like about it is that I leave the, the grocery store, and my bill is $50 less than it would be if I was at a different store. So it is a value to the community, both in uh, retained earnings for those that live here and the employment that it offers to many people. I will say that I'm, I'm very proud of the workers of Market Basket to stand up for what they thought was right. And um, I got endorsed by SEIU Local 888. And they're out there with the workers on their side trying to really advocate for them. Um, my role as a state representative would be to avail my services in any way I could to the parties. Um, it is a private business, so um, I don't think that I would have much of a role to regulate them in that way. I know that um, Governor Patrick offered to be a liaison and try to help with the negotiations, and I don't know if he's still part of that. So I think um, I would always offer my services. I would always be there for the residents and also the company, because we want them to stay open. That's essential, um, not only for the consumers in the city, a lot on a very tight income, but also for the employees. Um, so uh, did that answer your question? What would you do about the jobs if, in, if in fact, they do close? Well, I have a plan for workforce development. Um, and I don't know if we'll be up and running in time for this because I'm not state representative yet and everything takes a long time when you're in a, when you're in a legislative body. Um, so I do have a plan for that. But I have 10 seconds left and I'm hoping we, should, we could get to it. Should I, okay, I'll tell you now. So in the Midwest, they have this, they have this no, I don't have time. No, we'll, we'll time. follow up with that. Let, let me have Peg answer that and then we'll do a, a, a one minute additional. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Steve. Um, I love Market Basket myself. Um, when I lived on the North Shore, I always shopped at Market Basket. When we moved down here, I would drive all the way down to Rainham just so I could um, save some money, especially with three growing children. Um, but the role of um, the state representative in uh, private business, I think it's a private business. Um, we don't get involved when, say, the chains like Kmart go out of business. Um, I think a state representative can provide mediation. Um, it is great that they do provide employment. A lot of um, school-age children or college-age children um, get jobs over there, and it is a service to the community. Um, we do have career works in uh, Brockton for anyone who is looking for employment. Um, but with regards to uh, the Westgate Mall, I think the Westgate Mall is doing great. I know that they thought that West, the market basket would be an anchor, but I've seen a lot of new businesses in the Westgate Mall, and I think they will survive without Market Basket, even though I loved Market Basket. Um, but the role of state representative, I think, is to just bring them to mediation and uh, help coax them to an amicable agreement. Okay, um, then I'm gonna kind of turn this question around and uh, say jobs in the economy are probably a key issue for any state representative or any elected official in Massachusetts, people are out there hurting. What are your plans to create jobs and help the economy? Everybody's talking about it, it's a key issue. I will start with Paul. Well, first I'd like to uh, mention about the Market Basket employees. Uh, they're non-union, and I'm very proud of the fact that being non-union, that they would stand behind their leader the way they have. <clears throat> it's just, I've never seen anything like it. These people are very brave to go out there every day and picket and support somebody that they believe in so fervently. Um, when I'm holding signs a couple of mornings every week up on 106 and 24 with a couple of my guys, we have a sign that says honk for market basket employees and the beeps just nonstop. So people out there appreciate it as well. 
The SEIU being out there with them, well, I think we know they're trying to unionize them. That's the only reason they're there. They're not there in any support for non-union people. Give me a break. Anyway, as far as jobs, uh, of course, jobs are extremely important. Uh, one of my uh, priorities is to abolish the employee at will statute. Maybe we'll get to that later on because there are baby boomers multiplying in, in thousands every single day and hitting their 50s and 60s. And they're being put out of work many uh, for no reason at all. And just uh, more of a greed uh, uh, situation, if you will, so that corporations can dump somebody who's 50 or 60 years old, who's been there 25, 30 years, give them a small severance, get them collect unemployment, and bring in somebody 25 years old for less money. So in order to create jobs in our community in the, in the 10th district, we have to keep our taxes low. We have to cut uh, property taxes in the Brockton area in particular uh, so that it's affordable for business to come to Brockton. Main Street has to be made into a two-way street. There's no doubt about that. You're never going to get businesses here. You can cut the taxes all you want. They're not going to come here, particularly to Main Street. So yes, that will create more jobs. You've got to bring business here first. Okay, uh, Michelle. Thank you, Mark. I believe in workforce development. So I went to college um, and I was able to get a job, thankfully. I came out of college when jobs were plentiful. Um, and it was very easy to get a job in the 90s when I got out of college. It's different now. And there are so many people in Brockton that don't have the same opportunities as I had and didn't go to college and find themselves in a very difficult position right now. And there are some states that are answering that problem. And what they're doing is they're revolutionizing the way they partner, have public private partnerships with their community colleges. So they'll go out and they'll find an industry that wants to open up a factory and they will have them come and get a factory building and we have a lot of them in Brockton and the community college will transform into a six month training program to teach the people how to use the, the materials and the machinery on the factory floor. I'll give you an example. So there was a 45 year old man and he was working in a factory um, and he got laid off and he couldn't find a job for a long time and he found out a couple towns over there was a community college that had a six month training program for um, a manufacturer that was coming into town. He took that six month training program, he didn't have a high school diploma. He got a job at the factory after going through the training program that paid him around $40,000 a year. This is what's happening in some of the Midwestern states right now. And I think as your state rep I know, as your state representative, I'm going to focus on what's working in other areas and I'm going to bring that here. Because you know, maybe people aren't benchmarking. Maybe up at the state house they're not looking at these novel approaches to how we can get people ready for the jobs that are here. What we need to do, the, the goal isn't a, a person issue. There's so much wonder, so many wonderful people in Brockton that are hard workers, ready for the job. The, the goal, the problem is matching the person with the position that's available. And that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to fo focus on, like a laser beam on workforce development. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's do a Can light. I um, that would be a good, that would be a very good idea, Peg. Thank okay, you very much. Sometimes you get a little lost. Oh, so. That's okay. Um, I apologize. I um, was really encouraged to um, learn this week that the governor has signed an $80 million uh, package to create job creation and job innovation. And as your state representative, I want to make sure I get up there and make sure that Brockton and East Bridgewater and West Bridgewater get their piece of the pie. Um, the investment is to make capital available to small businesses and young companies, and that is a huge uh, plus uh, for Brockton that's going to be you know, spurring our development. Um, some of the uh, firms, the partnerships will be with Google and Microsoft, and I think um, Mass Tech Collaborative. Um, I also like the program that we have up at the Brockton High School, where one of the banks come in and recruit or train their own um, employees. And they have their own banking up there. And uh, those kinds of partnerships between businesses and high schools are really what's going to help our economy so that 
when they come out. Um, they may not w always have to go to college. They could have a job all set up in the company's benefit because they've already trained their students or their employees before they even get on the job. So those are the kinds of things that I'd like to uh, work on when I become state representative. Thank you. Okay. Might I have a, a rebuttal on one of those? Things? Sure. Thank you very much. Um, just, to, just to clarify, the right to work um, rule that Mr. Beckner mentioned, uh, that would actually have a chilling effect on hiring. Because um, if an employer knew that it was difficult to lay someone off if they weren't doing a good job, or, or, or neglectfully for that matter, they're going to be very careful about who they hire. That, that would have a chilling effect. I don't think any um, jobs creation bill, um, or especially business, would want to get rid of the right to work in Massachusetts. Thank you. Paul, do you want to comment? Again? Yes, I would. Do you, do you think it's fair that somebody who uh, has worked 25 or 30 years for an organization <clears throat> is just ushered out the door because they can be? The employer will statute states that you can be let go for any reason, no reason, or a false reason. And when you go, if you try to get a lawyer, you're never going to get one in the state of Massachusetts because every judge will side with the law, with the doctrine. That to me is terribly unfair. And you're going to find a lot of baby boomers being put out of jobs where they think that they have this money built up and they've got five more years before they retire. And it's all going to be taken away. It's happening. I was out there networking um, after I left Bob's Discount Furniture two years ago. And I met a lot of people. I was horrified at the amount of people that were put out of work for no reason or any reason at all. And they were, they were, they were losing their homes. They didn't know what they were going to do. I mean, it's the same as getting sick. I think it's a, it's a terrible, terrible situation that's got to be addressed. And if you're an employer, do your due diligence. Make sure you hire the proper person. Okay? If you don't hire the proper person, then it's on you. The onus is on you. Don't, don't, don't uh, uh, hide behind the employer will statute thinking you can just uh, throw somebody out to the street and, uh, and forget about what they've done. Peg, did you get weigh in on this one? Um, <clears throat> I do feel that <clears throat> there should be some loyalty between um, employers and employees. If you have an employee that's been a good employee for, you know, 10, 15 years, um, and they are depending on, you know, their pensions or retirement. There are so many people um, who are <clears throat> of retirement age and they don't have any retirement benefits um, built up at all, especially part-time workers. They seem to um, have no uh, retirement savings at all. So I think the part-time workers need to have a little bit of help so that when they come to retirement age, they'll have some um, retirement to depend on. Okay, I'm going to now move on, um, watching all the cues here and trying to keep everything straight, uh, to a quick lightning round so I can give it a chance to have you guys ask each other some questions. Um, it's a yes or a no answer or a very brief sentence, okay? I don't have a buzzer or a gong, but I will have to say time. So why don't we start with uh, Larry asking all three candidates a, a quick question. All right. Um, <clears throat> How important is it to you to have a Democrat in the 10th Plymouth District seat? Um, uh, that's probably not a yes or no <laughs> question. Um, is it important to you, rather, to have a Democrat in the 10th District Plymouth seat? Okay, and Michelle would be first. I think as far as the State House being controlled by the Democrats right now, if we want to get more of the share of the pie to bring home to our district, it is helpful not only to have a Democrat in the seat, but to have an experienced Democrat like myself, who's been on the city council, who has learnt the ropes, and is ready to hit the ground running on day one. Um, so I do think it's important, but I think it's important to have the right Democrat. Okay. That was 30 seconds, so lightning round is going to be quicker. Uh, mm -hmm. Next would be Peg. Okay. Um, Yes, I think it's very important um, for a Democrat to stay in the uh, position of state representative. Um, with the, hopefully, we're getting a Democratic uh, governor so that we can all get our um, Democratic issues passed through. And since I've worked on legislative issues already and have been successful in getting them passed, um, I hope the future ones that I'm working on 
um, Democrats will be able to work on those too. You want 30 seconds too, so Paul, let's see if you We'll can try to keep it. it to 10 seconds. As I've said before, this is not a Democratic thing. It's not a Republican thing. It's about doing the right thing. I think what matters the most is having the right person representing the 10th district or being the governor or being legislators throughout the state. There's, it doesn't seem to be working right now with the Democratic controlled house with the way they're thinking and uh, we'll, we'll leave it there. Okay, 23, I'll give, give it to you. Um, Ozzy, your next quick lightning round question. Question is, <clears throat> are you for the plow plan? If so, why? Uh, the why is going to take a lot longer than well, a lightning round. Two, a two or three word, two or, three yeah, word two or answer three words. on why. Okay, so first would be Paul. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't, I don't think, it's got more than two or three words. Come on. Um, unfathomable. I finally got that out. Um, I, it, I just, no. I'm not for the power plant. I don't think it's, it's, getting, it's bringing anything to the average citizen. When, when something like that is brought uh, where it's beneficial to the average citizen, Maybe we look at it a little bit differently, but right now, absolutely not. Okay, and Peg. Um, I think the issue, um, whether you're for or against the power plant, it's up to the courts right now. I think um, our, our time to uh, make a decision regarding that is out of our hands right now. Brockton has already lost nine cases against um, the power plant, and there's a $68 million price tag hanging over our heads that I think um, needs to be thought about and addressed and have a plan in place so that we're not bankrupt as a city and have to look to the state to bail us out. And Michelle? Um, I've always been against the power plant. I'm the only candidate in this, in this race that has fought for the residents and took part in every part of the permitting process as a strong voice for public health and safety. And I can tell you in a few reasons, a few words why. Brockton has the 10th highest asthma hospitalization rate for children in the state. Our air pollution is already bad enough. We do not need any more air pollution to be brought to the city of Brockton. And just to be fair, I think that everyone should know that in a different forum, Ms. Ms. Curtis said that she did support the power plan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, since that was said, Peg, do you want to respond to that? Um, as a state representative, I have to um, represent the people, and whatever they want is what they will get with regards to the power plant. Okay, Paul, any further comment? Nope. Okay. Steve, quick lightning round question. This will be a yes or no question for all of you. In Michelle Dubois' opening statement, she mentioned the uh, medicinal marijuana dispensaries. Now medicinal marijuana is uh, legal in the state. Uh, small amounts of marijuana are also decriminalized for personal use. Do you use marijuana or any other recreational drugs? Peg first. No. <laughs> okay. Paul? No, I don't. Michelle? No. Well, that was quick. Okay. Um, let us go at this point. What do we have for time left? In, in I would like to, to address the medical marijuana issue, though, <laughs> um, since we're on the subject. I think that um, it's a very um, important issue that we need to think about, especially in terms of security. I know that they want to make home deliveries, and I'm very concerned about the crime in the city being escalated or having our Brockton Police Department stressed even further in order to ensure the safety of these individuals. Um, I think that whole process needs to be thought, um, again, especially in lieu of the fact that a lot of the people who um, applied for these medical marijuana licenses weren't always truthful in these applications, so I think that process really needs to be rethought again. Okay, uh, that was 30 seconds, so uh, let's go with uh, Michelle next. On that if you want to say anything about medical marijuana I can say this when I saw the medical marijuana um, issue coming down the pike after the vote happened every single ward in Brockton and every single precinct within every ward voted to 
to allow medical marijuana. So when the, when the voters of Brockton said that they wanted to have medical marijuana, I as a city councilor went out and I found all the strong medical marijuana zoning laws across the country. And I made sure that wherever there was a failure identified in a different state, Brockton's medical marijuana law took that, zoning law took that into account. So we limit the number of medical marijuana um, facilities that can be in Brockton to, to, they have to be more than 500 feet away from each other. And our zone is such that they can't even have more than one. And we make sure that it cannot be near schools or playgrounds, because I say a parent has the right to be a parent. And if they don't want their child walking by a medical marijuana shop, they shouldn't have to have that. So that's what I thought of when I wrote that legislation, and I think that's what makes me a good legislator. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Um, so let's see. We have... Uh, what about me? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> Go for it, Paul. Mark, well, you keep forgetting us. <clears throat> uh, medical marijuana. It's, I see it as, as another... Uh, way for connected people to get wealthy and pad their own pockets. Um, it just, the whole thing just stinks of corruption. What can I say? I'm just trying to tell it like it is. Uh, I don't, uh, if you're going to have medical marijuana, why don't you just legalize marijuana, period? Yeah, they're doing it in Colorado, they're doing it out on the West Coast. It doesn't seem to be being, ha it doesn't seem to be having a, a terribly uh, bad effect on the communities, and consequently, it's actually, uh, just the opposite, that they bring in a lot of revenue that can be used and shared uh, throughout uh, those states. Uh, I, just, uh, I just think the way it's been drawn up has uh, is, uh, been terribly haphazard and uh, not well thought out. Okay. So I have one quick lightning round question, and uh, I will start with uh, Paul. Your, just say what it is, most important issue. Is this really a lightning round? I'm trying to make it one. So most important issue, just the, the topic. What is your most important issue at, that you'll deal with when you're, if you're elected a representative? Finding a way to get more funds down in the, in the 10th district for seniors, for veterans, for uh, public safety, and for our school system. That, though, that's easily the most important issue because everything else falls in line after that. So you've got to, like I said, you, you've got to, uh, you have to cut taxes. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple thing. You just can't keep raising taxes. That's a bunch of most important issues. Well, uh, that so was 30 seconds, so uh, Michelle. Education is my number one issue. Of course, um, like my opponent, I care about veterans and I care about elders and I'm gonna fight for you. But my, if you're asking just for one issue, my number one is education, funding education properly, having more after school programming in Brockton, full day kindergarten and preschool in West Bridgewater and East Bridgewater right now they have to pay, and making sure that special education is funded. Those, those, are, my, those are my main priorities. And that's because, did you know that they plan for prison beds based on student achievement in third grade? We need to make sure our kids are up to snuff in third grade. Thank you very much. Peg? Um, thank you. Um, I have a couple of important issues. Um, education is um, one of the most important issues, but I think we need to increase our technology in our schools. The better paying jobs are ones that include a lot of technology, and I don't think that we have enough uh, technology in our schools in order to make our children uh, competitive in the job market and um, I just want to say that uh, the third grade test scores I don't believe Massachusetts used those uh, third grade test scores to build their prisons it's uh, I believe it's in um, the Midwest mm -hmm. okay um, what do we have left for time just curious at this point we have 10 minutes left okay um, now I need a yes or no that's it. I'm going to have Steve Foote do one question, and then we're going to go to closing statements. In view of some of the horrendous crimes that's been taking place in uh, Massachusetts lately, particularly the Marathon bomber, uh, Yokas and I have, do you or do you not favor the death penalty? Michelle first. No. Peg? No. Paul? 
Yes. Okay. Let's go to closing statements at this point. Uh, we drew earlier in the evening, and we are going to go for a two-minute closing statement for Paul Beckner. Well, to sum everything up, um, I want to thank everybody first uh, for having this forum again. Um, I think it's very helpful where we're not getting a whole lot of uh, coverage from our print media. Um, I think the radio and, uh, and, and Brockton Cable Access has done, a, done their part, and uh, I think we're all grateful for that. Um, I'd like to thank my, uh, my, my beautiful wife, Pam, and my kids for putting up with another election. This is two in, in one year, and if I'm not successful, I'll probably be the first candidate since I've lost two elections in a year. Um, but I'm hoping that won't be the case. I don't expect it to be the case. I've developed a 11-point uh, list of priorities, and I don't have time to read them all to you right now. Um, so please go on my website, beckforrep.com. You can read it for yourself. Um, it's got some of the things we touched on tonight. Uh, as far as uh, my number one uh, priority is obviously funding for the South Shore and our schools, senior living areas, uh, disabled veterans, veterans, and uh, safety and road and bridge repair. Uh, those things are very necessary, and there's, there's too much waste on Beacon Hill that's not being addressed. And uh, I intend to address that when I get up to Beacon Hill and uh, make it transparent. Maybe we'll put some of those, uh, those wasteful lists on uh, the Brockton Hub uh, when I do so. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that I have uh, the best tools uh, to, to uh, represent uh, you uh, at Beacon Hill and uh, to bring uh, results that are going to really matter to the South Shore. Uh, let me finish with this. This is from Robert Kennedy back in 1966. When a man stands up for an idea or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current that will sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Now that meant something different back in 1966, but that wave of oppression and resistance is taking place in the United States and in Massachusetts today, folks. Let's get rid of it and send somebody up to the, to the, uh, to the State House that's really on your side and wants to work for you without any bull crap. Thank you, and Paul Beckner, please vote on Tuesday, September Michelle. 9th. Thank you, Mark. I wish there was more time that I could stay and speak with, with you at home through the television and the panelists about my policies and plans uh, to be your next state representative. I have been a city councilor, but there isn't, and I'm sorry about that. I've been a city councilor in Brockton for nine years, five terms, really fighting for families. And as an example, when a single mother of three came to me with a $100,000 water bill that she had been trying to get corrected on her own for five months and no one would help her, I came to her aid and I championed her cause. And in the process, we uncovered hundreds of other people that got five and $10,000 water bills. As a city councilor, I drafted legislation that's now law that gives more consumer protection. So if this ever happens again, consumers will be protected. I got hundreds of, I, took, I went with hundreds of senior citizens to the meetings with the DPW and, not hundreds, tens, I went with, 25 senior citizens to 50 to, um, to meetings with the DPW where we negotiated bills that they got that were wrong and I got them fixed. And the reason that your water meter got switched out is because through this process we found out that Brockton water meters were failing and they had to be replaced. So this is from the beginning of me discovering a problem to the end. I demanded reform. I exposed the problem. I helped residents. And that's what I want to do as your state representative. I want to bring what I've learned at the city council level and the problems that I've seen that can only be fixed at the state house and I want to fix them up there. And one, so my funding priorities is education public health and safety, roads and infrastructure repair, elders and veteran services. If I'm elected, I'm going to ask to be on the Joint Committee for Elders Affairs and Veterans Affairs. I want to serve you. I want to be your full-time state representative. And I like to tell people, if you give me your vote, 
I'm going to work for you 24 hours a day and be a great state representative that voices your interests at the state house, that cares about what the problems that you're facing and wants to make sure that you get a fair shake in government. Thank you very much. My website is electmichelledubois.com, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-D-U-B-O-I-S. Thank you. And Peg. Hi, um, thank you um, for inviting me here this evening. Um, I'm very proud to be here. Um, the voters of East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, and um, Brockton have a very important choice to make on September 9th. I'd like to remind the voters that I'm an educator with proven community leadership skills. I've been elected to the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and I've been elected as the Ward 6 Chair. I've already worked successfully on important legislative issues like the Cory Reform Bill, the Minimum Wage Bill, the Prescription Monitoring Bill, and the Earned Sick Time Bill. When choosing a state representative for the 10th Plymouth District, you want to make sure that you pick someone who can work cooperatively together on issues that improve the lives of our families. I'm also the only uh, candidate who's been working on the drug crisis, trying to improve the lives of our communities and reduce our crime rate. So on September 9th, I'd ask for your vote humbly, and you can contact me at electpeggycurtis.com or electpeggycurtis at gmail.com. Or you can contact me at 508-584-8830. Thank you. And I just want to thank all the candidates for participating in this. This is our community service coverage that we do to make sure people know all the candidates, all the faces, and all the issues in the race. I want to thank my uh, panelists, uh, Steve Foote, Ozzy Jordan, and Larry Boyd. Uh, thank Larry for his service with the Brockton Hub, another way to communicate, and uh, just proves we're all in this together. So on behalf of uh, Brockton Community Access and my wonderful staff, crew, and volunteers, uh, stay tuned for more coverage. We'll have the Republican Forum as well for state representative, and we will be doing full, live, comprehensive election coverage of this particular state representative's race uh, on September 9th. Uh, thank you, and make sure you watch uh, Brockton Community Access, channels 9, 12, and 98, and uh, stay informed right here in your community. Good night.